I know you lied. I know you did. You've been lying all along. You've been lying every day of your life. Do not lie to me. What is result direction? Result direction is telling, directing the actor by telling them how you want, what effect you want them to have on the audience. I started out, here's my book. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, and this is a, a re, is that the 25th right edition? Place? Yeah. This is the 25th anniversary edition of the, my original book, Directing Actors, which came out in 1996. And I, the first chapter, I started out, I called it Result Direction and Quick Fixes. And I started out with a list of, at the time, 10 things that, that I called Result Direction that uh, were way, ineffective ways to uh, give direction to actors. And I did it on purpose. I did it to get people's attention. It backfired a little bit because people would come to my workshops afterwards and they'd be terrified that they're going to say the wrong thing. It, it's one of the reasons why I, I was so thrilled to get the chance to do this book and to kind of correct that impression that when I talk about result direction, it's, it's a quick way to bring up the subject of subtext that that because the, what I called the quick fixes, which are the verbs, the facts, or emotional history, uh, imagery, and physical life and event, um, that that they they're not always they're not always that quick. They're quick when you know how to use them. But I but I wanted to have that first chapter be a way that people would not lose hope. <laughs> I wanted them to say, okay, these are these are the list of don'ts, but there's, you know, hope. There are things you can do instead. And but but it did it did turn out, you know, people would come into my workshops and I say, you know, I read that list of things not to do, and I do every one of them. And so I'm terrified of saying the wrong thing. Now I never wanted people to be terrified. I never wanted people to think of result direction as the language police. I always wanted it to be a way to introduce the idea that. There's more to story and more to characters than just what you see uh, on a on a flat screen. That there's un there's an underneath that that people's that characters people's emotional history affects what they do now. That the images in their memory and in their dreams that that affects what they do now. That the that the, their intention their verb or their intention or their need or their objective. That's, uh, that's where their behavior comes, uh, comes from. And I wanted directors to know more about that, to understand it, and not because they always have to fix, you know, tell the actor, well, don't, well, don't play that objective, play this one instead. I, I, I never meant that that's what I wanted them to do, but I wanted them to understand the tool of objective, of what the character wants, what the character needs because it's such a helpful way to talk to actors to ask but to ask them first what 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 is your objective what do you want here and so and also that these tools about subtext will lead you toward an understanding of emotional event which is the most important thing for a director to know is what is the emotional event of a scene what is a scene about the simplest example of result direction is a line reading so if a director says to an actor, let's say the line is, uh, don't lie to me. The, if a if director says, you're saying the line wrong, don't say, don't lie to me. Say, don't lie to me. You know, that that's a line reading. And that that's the simple example, simplest example of, of result direction. And I think by now, most directors know they're not supposed to use that. But... Um, but but it it still it 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 often gets hard for them to understand why, and if they don't understand why, it's not a good idea to give line readings or to to, to tell them, I want you to be angrier or I want you to be uh, sadder. Uh, that's another way to give result direction. Say you need to be angrier, and uh, if they don't understand the why of it, 
it's easy for them to, to feel like, oh gosh, I'm going to say something wrong and I'd better not say anything. Or, and, and directors in my workshops, they used to come up to me and say, well, is it okay if I say this? And I'd say, well, you know, it's not the language police. You can say anything you want. But ask them what they understand by it. That's, that's a helpful way to do it. And ask them what they're working on. Create a dialogue with them. So, uh, but let me give you an example of, of how... Uh, you know, result direction versus understanding what the emotional event of a scene is. So the, the, the scene might be an argument and, and, the, uh, and the, if the director says to the actors, this is an argument between best friends that could result in the end of the friendship. That creates the emotional stakes and, and, and it's a very specific direction of where this director wants the, the scene to go. And to say something like that instead of, I want you to be angrier. Okay? So that's, 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 what I, that's the real reason for studying uh, result direction and the alternatives to it, is so that you can get to un an understanding of the emotional event. Which is the uh, which I think the director is responsible for and should communicate to the actors. Although, side note, you should always be ready to change your mind. Sometimes a different emotional event works great or works better, and then you can still move on, even if it's not the one you thought was going to work. But that's that's kind of the the difference between between result directing. You know, I want you to get angrier here. I want you to be more disappointed there versus talking about the, the, the emotional events of the story. That, that this, and, and to think about the differences in different kinds of arguments. So if you say this is, instead of saying um, this is an argument between best friends that could result in the end of the friendship, a different kind of emotional event, a different kind of argument could be these people argue all the time. They have had the same argument many times. This, they're, they're, there's, they're arguing this time. There's something new about this argument. I want us to find out what it is. But I'm thinking it was unlikely to lead to the end of the friendship. Now, I also use the terms of saying it's unlikely to or it could instead of it will lead to the end of the relation, friendship or won't lead to the end of the friendship. So that whatever does happen, whatever emotional event does happen, happens in the moment while the camera is running. So that it's not all, uh, oh, you know, expect, expected. It's, it's not all pat and sort of paint by the numbers. So if I were in a scene and I'm an actor and I'm delivering a line very flat and it's don't lie to me. So you're the director. You're saying um, with result direction and, and using that it would be to correct me on my tone maybe. But if you came at it from another angle, you would be explaining why I'm saying this line. And through that, I would know how to put more emotion to it. Well, uh, it, it might be, or, or a real quick verb, I, I might say, what's your intention on this line? Okay, so then I'm saying, well, this is a friendship, and she doesn't understand me, and I've told her repeatedly, don't lie to me. I would say, let that come into the line, because that sounds very good to me. What you just said sounds like a very good way to play it. So I'd say, let that come into the line. I think that would give it, would give it more spark. Oh, I see. But so, the way you said it first. Right? So when I'm developing it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, let me talk, to, talk about action verbs a little bit, active verbs. Because uh, if you... Uh, I, I, I did think of an example to do this. Um, if, if, the, if the line is, don't lie to me, um, I just thought of three different intentions that we could have. It could be... I'm going to pick to convince, to accuse, and to beg. Very different from each other, right? 
So just to give you an example of how that would be, I, I, I'll do a little, a little improvisation of convincing you of, of, of something. And the kind of the, the subtext uh, underneath convincing is telling somebody what you think they should do. So, I, so I'm going to say, you know, I think you should never lie. I don't think you or anybody else should ever lie. Don't lie to me. Okay? So that would be to convince. If it's accused, then it's, I know you lied. I know you did. You've been lying all along. You've been lying every day of your life. Do not lie to me. Okay? Uh, or if it's bay, then it's, I don't know what I'm going to do if nobody will tell me the truth. I need, I need to be told the truth. Don't lie to me. Okay, so it comes out different, and there could be different reasons, as you were asking, you know, talking about the reasons why a person might be begging or a person might be accusing, accusing or a person might be convincing. But, of course, sometimes, sometimes characters do the wrong thing. Sometimes they want somebody to be open and honest with them, but they do the wrong thing to get it. If they demand that they be honest, it might not work, right? So, um, so the verbs can be, you know, you can play opposites. You can do lots of things with them, but there is always a reason for them. 